Welcome back to another episode and today we compare two smaller single aisles, the A220 vs 737 Max. The A220 had a complicated fate. Launched as the Bombardier C-Series in 2004, it was Canada's hopes of breaking into the largest markets of aircraft, the single aisle market. It was positioned between regional jets and the lower end A319, smaller than your usual A320 or 737-800. But thanks to the newest generation engines and new technologies such as lighter materials and new aerodynamics, it was around 10-15% to 15 more efficient. The C-Series covered the regional markets with its higher performances and tackled the lower end of traditional single aisles such as the A319 and 737-700. Sales of the C-Series prompted Airbus to launch the NEO in 2010. Boeing though wants a new clean sheet replacement as we all know. However, there was overwhelming demand for a re-engined 737 so as to maintain commonality, delivering both the fuel-saving benefits as well as lower pilot transition costs and maintenance costs. Boeing eventually launched the MAX family, and the Dash 7 competes with the CS300 directly. Delta at the time was eyeing lower-end single aisles for domestic operations. Both Boeing and Bombardier competed aggressively, though at the end of the day, Bombardier won the order for 75 CS 100s. Boeing though wasn't pleased. They complained that Bombardier sold aircraft at below manufacturing prices in a practice known as dumping. The US applied a 300% tariff on C Series aircraft sold in the United States, and the order was halted. Bombardier had been suffering financially due to high cost of production. Surprisingly, once rival Airbus stepped in, they offered to produce a C-Series in the Mobile Alabama plant, meaning the aircraft avoided tariffs. The C-Series finally joined the Airbus family as the A220, with the largest A220-300 going head-to-head -head with the 737-7. So between a high-end A220 and low-end 737 MAX, which is better? Before we find out if you're new here, a warm welcome and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more epic videos on the way. Performance. The 737-7 flies 153 passengers 2 class to 3850 nautical miles and can take 172 max. The A220-300 flies 141 passengers in a typical 2 class layout to 3350 nautical miles and can take 160 max. So the 737-7 has more performance, but the excessive range comes at a cost of efficiency. Engines. The 737-7 uses the CFM Leap 1B. Due to its lower ground clearance, it has a smaller fan at 69 inches and lower bypass ratio of 9 to 1. This reduces the power plant efficiency. Each on the 737-7 produces 26,786 pounds of thrust each. The A220 uses the rival Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan PW1500G. With a larger fan diameter of 733 inches, and a higher bypass ratio of 12 to 1, meaning it's more efficient. Thrust is at 23,300 pounds for the A220-300. The efficiency and here the all-new lighter clean sheet A220 is unbeatable. The 737-7 burns around 2.51 kg per kilometer per trip, and Boeing claims 1.94 liters per 100 kilometers per passenger with a 140 seat two-class layout. In my view, though, the per seat figures are unrealistic. Despite this. Using Boeing's unrealistic figures for the per seat count, the A220 still burns around 8% less per trip at 2.3 kg per kilometer, nearly 5% less per seat at 1.95 liters per 100 km for 135 passengers to class layout. So all in all, the A220 is undoubtedly one of the cleanest and most efficient single house yet. Cabins, what me and you care about most. The 737 MAX has the new sky interior applied and inspired from 787. With its new curved overhead bins, new mood lighting, this gives a more spacious feel. Optional is new IFE and new Wi-Fi. It does however have cramped toilets and narrow 17-inch seats plus a narrower aisle. The A220 has a much better cabin. Its 5 abreast layouts means 18.5-inch wide seats and a wider aisle. It also has larger overhead bins. The same new mood lighting, Wi-Fi and IFE are also optional. But there are specialties including larger toilets with optionally a view and for more normal view, larger windows. 
It also has a nicer galley for crew and new cockpit with larger displays. A220 has a more modern cabin and is one of the nicest cabin of any regional jet and of any single out in fact. Advantages and disadvantages, the 737-7 shares common parts with over 10,000 737s in service and has higher performances for routes that need it plus better air fuel performance. This higher performance comes at the cost of efficiency, given it's basically a shrink of the larger 737-8 with the same wings and engines but shorter fuselage and less seats, it has a much higher seat cost than the larger, more optimized 737-8. The A220-300 is a good balance of range and efficiency. It is most optimized for short routes, but has enough performance for longer ones as well. It also has a better cabin. However, it does lack commonality with other aircraft types even in the Airbus family. Orders. The 737-7 is a commercial failure with just 52 firm orders. The A220-300 may not be a hot selling single out, but has a decent order book of 540. So what's the overall verdict? Well, the 737-7 is a de-optimized larger Dash 8 with excessive range for shorter routes. All in all, the A220-300 with its perfect size, range, performance, and greater efficiency is the better small single out that sets the standard in its class. Thanks for tuning in and to meet next time, one team, one aviation, one sky ahead.